Solving simultaneous equations by elimination. Now, the uh, scheme of what this video is aimed at has simultaneous equations down as a grade C level 7. But far as far as I'm aware, I have never seen simultaneous equations on a level 7, a test that goes up to level 7, or, by that matter, on any foundation exam at GCSE. It's always been a grade B level 8 question. But, as I've got to cover it for this uh, course that this video is aimed at, I shall do it now. I'll just try and keep it fairly simple, but I will show an ex a complicated example at the end. Now, this is going to take quite a while to go through these. Um, if you are just practicing these, then you can practice these now before I go through it. Um, but I'm not going to do any practice examples of this because it will take too long. Now, one of the other things I'd like to say is, with any equations, some students are very good at guessing the answers, especially if the answers are whole numbers. So, for example, this first one, you could guess the answers to x and y here just by trying some basic numbers and seeing what happens. And, to a certain extent, for most of these. But what I'm trying to do is demonstrate a method that will always work. And when you get to a complicated one like this last one, it's unlikely that you'll be able to guess the numbers, but you might be able to. But eventually, you'll come a cropper. So it's best to learn the method um, and this is the basic method for solving some of those equations. So, first of all, you need the the, the letters um, that you're trying to solve on the left-hand side. The idea is to try and eliminate one of the letters by adding or subtracting the two equations until something disappears. Now, this first equation, I have one lot of x and one lot of x. So, if I subtract those two equations, so I do x minus x, which is nothing, 3y minus minus y, and you'll be very careful with your negatives and these sort of things. 3y minus minus y, which is plus y, makes 4y. And 13 take away 5 is 8. So we can work out that y equals 2. Now with the simultaneous equation, we have to bol solve both equations at the same time, so we need the value for x as well. So if I pick the easier of the two equations, what x minus y equals 5, and replace the y with 2, I have x minus 2 equals 5, so x must be 5 plus 2, which is 7. So, a fairly straightforward one. So let's try and build it up to something a little bit more complicated. Now this equation, well no, actually we're going to do another basic one. So that's the, the basic method where we subtract. Let's have a look at one where we add. Now the x's are different, but the y's are the same. You've got, well, apart from the fact that one's minus y and one's plus y which is ideal, because if we add those two equations, we add the, the x's to the x's, so that's 6x, and we add the minus y to the plus y, the y disappears, because um, minus y plus y is nothing, and 7 plus 23 is 30. So we have 6x equals 30, so x equals 5, and then again we put that into either of these two equations, I'm going to put it into the top one, so 2x would be 10, because x equals 5, minus y equals 7, so what do you take away from 10 to get 7? Well, that's 3. So x equals 5 and y equals 3. Um, if you're not sure whether you've done it right, you could then take your two values and put it into the other equations. So does that work? 4 times 5 is 20, plus 3 makes 23, ideal. OK, now one way it's going to get slightly trickier because we don't have the same amount of x or y. Um, x is, we can change the x's so that they're the same, but that would be slightly more complicated than just changing the y. So uh, the technique we're going to use here is multiplying through the whole equation by a particular value. If we multiply every term in the equation, it doesn't change its intrinsic values. It just makes it different. It's like an equivalent equation, just like equivalent fractions. So if I multiply through this bottom equation by 2, so I times this term by 2, I times this term by 2, and I times this term by 2, I get 4x plus 2y equals 18. Now the reason why I did that is so that the y's are the same and then I'm going to subtract them because I've got plus 2y and plus 2y. If I take away the 2, um, then the y's will disappear. But what I'm going to do here, I'm trying to be sneaky here, thinking ahead, when I do 4, if I did 3x take away 4x and 16 take away 18, I'm going to have negative numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the smaller values underneath. So I'm going to put this original equation underneath this new one, and then I'm going to subtract them. So 4x take away 3x is x. That's 0, that's 2. So we get straight away x equals 2. And then if I use that into this first equation, um, where x equals 2, I've got 4 plus y equals 9, so y would be 5, because 4 plus 5 is 9. 
Okay, let's just check to see if that works. So if we put the x equals 2 into there, we get 6. Plus 2 lots of 5 is 10, makes 16. So that works. Okay, now the last one. Now, with uh, simultaneous equations, quite often the problems you have are to do with um, the numbers that the answer is going to be, not actually the process of the simultaneous equations. You can make mistakes with the negatives, um, but if you go through the process that I showed you, you will get quite a lot of method marks on an exam. Um, and eventually, with a lot of practice, you will get good with the numbers. Now in this one, we can't just double or multiply one of the x's or the y's to make the other. So we're going to use a method that will always work, even with these ones, these original ones. It's if we just look at the x's, the ones at the front, and we realize that if we times this equation by 4, and I times this equation by 5, then I'm going to have 20x in both. So I'm going to go through times this whole equation by 4 to so give me 20x plus 8y equals 8.8. .8. Uh, you've got to remember to times each one by 4. Quite often people forget to times the, the number on the other side, and that can be a source of errors. 5 times 4x is 20x. Oops, that's a subtract. Always best to look before you write. Take away 5 times 3y is 15y, and that's going to be equal to 5 lots of 5.6, which is 28, I believe. OK, now we can subtract the two equations. Now I'm just going to do it as, as they're written. That's probably the most straightforward way. 20x take away 20x is nothing. 8y minus minus 15 is the same as adding 15. And 8 plus 15 is 23y. 8.8 8 .8 minus minus 28 is going to be 36.8. OK, I'm going to have to bring in the calculator here. I'm guessing this is going to be relatively nice, but let's just use the calculator. 36.8 divided by 23 is 1.6, so y equals 1.6. And then if I put that value into the first equation, I'll have 5x plus 2 lots of 1.6, which is 3.2, equals 2.2, so 5x take away the 3.2 is, is 1, so x equals 0 0.2. So x equals 0 0.2. And that would be the solution to that. And that would be very difficult to guess. You could get that by trying to improve it, but it will take you quite a while. So it's best to have a method.